Step 4. Data centers. You may have heard of quantum data centers already. In fact, some of the large companies that are building quantum computers have made some of their devices available to the public. We can inter interface with them through the classical internet. But this is not quite a data center. This picture here is not quite a quantum data center that we have in mind. Currently, we as classical clients can send our jobs, our computations through the classical internet to uh, the quantum computers, which then run them and return classical data. What we have in mind is a full-on quantum data center using the quantum internet, where quantum uh, clients can connect to these data centers. So over here, we've got our quantum clients running some computations that they want to delegate to the quantum data center through the quantum internet, or they may want to use the data center storage capabilities. Also, we have a sensor network over here that needs to connect to one of the quantum mainframes through the quantum internet. So this is the image that we have in mind. That's quite an abstract image though. Here's a little bit more concrete idea of how a quantum data center will interface with the quantum clients. The clients are over here, the computational nodes or the sensor nodes, and they connect to the quantum internet. The quantum internet interfaces with the uh, quantum data center network through a special router called the gateway router that is placed at the boundary between the uh, two networks. So the traffic pattern flows through this gateway router. Uh, data center networks are different from multi-computer or supercomputer interconnects that we talked about in step three of this lesson. The key differences are the following. The quantum data center networks are outward focused service and traffic. The computers in a data center largely exist to support external clients. Either the clients want to store their quantum data using the storage capabilities of a quantum data center, or they want to run their quantum computations. Also, the workload is very heterogeneous. Computers inside a quantum data center network are usually running independent, sometimes even unknown workloads, where workloads, in this case, uh, refers to the programs that the clients delegate to the quantum data center. The traffic pattern is also very heterogeneous. Therefore, it's very hard to predict and optimize. Often, quantum data center networks uh, are multi-tiered. There is a front end of servers or computers, which connects, communicates through the quantum internet with the clients. And then this front end communicates with the back end servers that are actually carrying out the workload. There is also system heterogeneity in a quantum data center networks. Hardware and software are replaced piece by piece, rather the whole thing all at once. And the key difference is also redundancy. Uptime for quantum data centers is critical. This can be achieved via redundancy in the systems, in the networks themselves, and copies of data. Over here, we have an image of a multi-tiered quantum data center network. Here we see are the front-end servers that communicate with the uh, clients, and then they process their uh, quantum requests, and they pass them on to the relevant quantum resources through the quantum data center network. And they pass them to the backend servers. So what does, uh, in such a multi-tier uh, scenario, what does the quantum data center network look like? Well, in fact, it's not going to be very different from a multi-staged a switched network that we talked about before, but including high redundancy, for example, in the form of a fat tree. Where again, here we have uh, these computational nodes on the left would be our front end servers. And here we have the ingress stage, the interior stage, and the egress stage of our uh, switching fabric, connecting to BSA nodes. That concludes our discussion of quantum data center networks.